What's up guys? I think my arms get lazier in every video. Today we are building October's PC of the month. Holy smokes, it's already October, what? What the hell am I gonna do for November's PC of the month? Turkey build. The objective of today's PC is to make a gaming rig that looks as badass as possible in an all silver themed aesthetic. I don't do these as often as maybe I used to, but this is going to be one of those vanity builds that focuses heavily on the aesthetics over the combination of parts or the actual balance of the hardware itself. So bear that in mind before you leave a comment like, how could you spend so much on LEDs and the case when you should have been spending more on the GPU, blah, 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 that sort of thing. I completely get it and I agree, I understand, but the objective of this system really is for vain purposes. Remember that there's not much logic to looking pretty. So on that note, why don't we go ahead and take a look at the parts that we'll be using for today's build, especially since they're all creepily sitting behind me and I'm kind of worried and freaking out that they're gonna do something. Yeah, I'm looking at you, fans. All right, where do we begin? Hmm. Well, let's begin with the case because it's freaking huge. This is the Fantex Enthu Evolve. Oh my goodness. It is a beautiful case. Dimitri from Hardware Connects, my good pal and fellow tech tuber, actually awarded this case chassis of the year for 2015, and I completely agree with him. It's a fantastic case, but I've actually never built in one before. Can you believe it? I, I've never reviewed this case. I built in the mini ITX version of it, but never the full ATX chassis. So I'm very excited to build in it today. It is, of course, rocking the very appropriate coat of Galaxy Silver Paint, which I think is gonna look fantastic with everything else involved here. So excited about that. We have got uh, over here, we got the graphics card. This is the EVGA for the win, GTX 1070. Now this is one of those areas where you guys are gonna be like, Kyle, you should have like got a way more budget case and you should have got a 1080. Why is this a seven and not an eight? Stupid. Yeah, yeah, I get it, I get it, I understand. Again, the objective of this build is not to be super balanced or anything like that. It's really just to show off something that looks pretty cool. That being said, though, I would have used a GTX 1080 for the win, but uh, my good old buddy, old Paul, is borrowing it right now. He was like, Kyle, I need your 1080. I was like, yeah, sure, you owe me 100 bucks. He's like, nah, man, nah, really? I was like, nah, man, I'm joking, you can keep it. Um, that's how we talk to each other. So yeah, I'll be using the 1070. It's a beautiful card. It looks exactly like the 1080, which is really what concerns me for this build again. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be pretty sweet. Eight gigs of GDDR5, VR ready, all that good sort of stuff. It's gonna be great for 1440p, uh, whether you're talking 2560 or 3440, like the Ace Fear Predator Monitor over there. Review coming soon. Moving on, we've got the MSI Z170A M Power Gaming Titanium Motherboard, and this is the bastard that started it all, folks. I wasn't even thinking. My mind was furthest away it could be from doing a silver build until this came in the mail. MSI just sent it to me. They didn't even ask if I wanted it. It just showed up on my doorstep, and I was like, mm, damn it, sexer. So I just knew that from looking at it, I had to do something with it, because apart from being a really high-end premium gaming motherboard on the Z170 platform, good for overclocking, whoa, it's also got this really unique sort of shimmery, silvery aesthetic coat all over it on the heat sinks on the PCB, on the PCI slots, everything is just coated in beautiful silver. Uh, so I thought, you know, I gotta take advantage of this somehow. No one's done it yet, I don't think. I don't think, link link me down below if someone has. Uh, so I think it's gonna be pretty cool. Also, for memory, this is, this is the shit to get right here, the Dominator Platts. You need some Dom Platts if you're gonna have a real silver motherboard in a silvery build. So this is from Corsair, 16 gigs, uh, 3000 megahertz, I believe. Yep, 3,000. Sorry, the focus is 3,000. It says right there, confirmed. For storage, we've got a two terabyte WD Black for all of our games and stuff and media. And for our boot drive and other applications, we've got a Crucial MX200 SSD. Apart from being just a really good budget drive, it's also silver. Hey, so we're gonna try to heat gun this label off actually because labels are lame. And I think if all goes as planned, I might stick it right there at the front mounting point at the bottom of the, uh, the N3 Evolve. I think that'll look pretty sweet. Oh, I forgot to mention, it's tempered glass. Of course, of course it's tempered glass, Kyle. Of course it is. How could I forget? So that's uh, that's another thing that I'm really excited about because it's, I think it's just gonna take it to a whole new level from a cosmetic standpoint. Also, we've got a CPU, of course. This wouldn't really be a build without one. It's a Core i5-6600K, hey. I've been using the CPU quite a lot lately, but uh, it's, it, it kicks ass, so I'm gonna keep using it. Also, we've got the H100i GTX V2. Even though the box does not say V2, this is actually the V1 box, is the 1.0. However, I lost the box for the V2, so I'm just using this box as a placeholder, but I've got the V2 over there, just chilling. What's up, V2? 
He's ready to go, all lubed up. We've also got the EVGA Supernova 850 watt G2L. This is building upon their older G2 model uh, with the L. The L stands for LED or lighting or luminance or uh, something with having to do with light. Uh, basically, it's got some LEDs, some white LEDs coming out of the uh, connectors, the power connectors themselves. That should look pretty cool. I'm not sure how much it's going to be visible in our case here, but I guess we'll find out and uh, maybe I'll stick the camera deep inside this case's backside to give you guys a look if we can't see it from the front. Moving on, we've got some fans here. These are uh, Noctua fans that we're gonna be placing, replacing the case fans with, as well as the fans on the uh, H100i. So um, Noctua fans, you guys all, you know them, you love them. They're, they're good guys, they're GG. Uh, so we've got uh, their Redux or Redo, however you wanna say it, you know, tomato, tomato. We've got uh, two of the 120s, uh, their uh, NFS12Bs at 1200 RPMs. Those are going to be replacing the radiator fans again on the cooler. And then we've also got four 140 millimeter fans. These are the NFP 14s, 14 S's, uh, redos, 1500 RPM, slightly faster RPMs. However, they're wider fans. They're larger blades, so they'll, they'll probably uh, not need to spin quite as fast or as hard as the, uh, as, the, as the 1200s over there, as the 120s. And those are going to be, again, replacing the case fans. I think they are going to be sweet. Also, they are featuring like a kind of gray, sort of gray color scheme. Very unique to uh, Noctua fans. They're not the, the nasty brown ones that hardly match with anything. And I just ripped the box, that's cool. But here's a look at the 120. The blade design is different from between the uh, the 120 and the 140, but I think this looks sick. This looks like a fan that you would see in like a an airplane hangar or something. So really excited to use these as well. And uh, a couple more things, a couple more things. I'm gonna go back to the cables really quick. We've got, um, I forgot to mention this. This is the white LED strip that we've got from Cable Mod. Got a SATA connector on the end, it's magnetic. I uh, love these little things. Cable Mod makes some really good ones. They're actually a little bit brighter than the BitPhoenix ones that I have, the Alchemy 2.0 magnetic um, strip. So we're gonna be sticking that in there. I think the white is gonna really do a nice job of illuminating all the silver accents in our system here. Didn't wanna wash it out with any other colors, so white seems to be the way to go. And then last but certainly, certainly not least, we've got some custom cable sleeving here from my boy over at Ensource. This is from Joey. And uh, if you guys remember my Manta build that I didn't do too long ago, um, I've actually since then, by the way, named that build Atlas, per some of your guys' suggestions after the more portly robot from Portal 2, because it looks kind of like him. So thank you guys for that suggestion. So this is uh, the same guy who did Atlas, the, the cables for Atlas, has also done the cables for this build. As soon as I saw the results from Atlas, I hit him up immediately after thinking up the idea for this system, and he was more than happy to oblige. Got these here really quick. Guys, he does great work. I'll put a link down below, nsourced.net, if you wanna check that out. Don't sleeve your own cables. It's a pain in the ass, trust me. Um, so I think on that note, those are all the parts that we're using. Holy smokes, I have nothing left to say here. So um, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and shut up now and get to work on this thing. So sit back, relax, enjoy the time lapse, and I'll see you back after it's all done.
All right, here she is, folks. Ain't she a beauty? Oh, yeah. I'm gonna put my wiener inside of her. Uh, so here it is. The build overall went fairly smooth, and I really like how it turned out. Actually, I, I, I think I say that for every build that I do, but it's true. I usually do like the builds that I that I assemble, um, but there were a couple snags. So I'm gonna do a, something a little bit different here. You can see I've, I've actually taken control of the tripod here. Woo! Woo! So uh, first off, the biggest problem that I had with this build was actually getting the sticker off of the, uh, the MX200 here, the SSD. Actually, the sticker itself came off really easy with just a little bit of uh, heat gun action, but it left this horrendous residue that took me almost an hour to get off by hand. I almost gave up several times and was just like, screw it, I'm just gonna use a different SSD, it's not gonna be silver, I don't care anymore. But I eventually got it off, I went through with it, and I'm so glad I did, because I think it's totally worth it. It just looks really nice, it matches with everything else, and it, it just kind of pops, it stands out quite a bit without being too distracting. I just, I'm really glad that I went through with it. Um, the sticker on the power supply went off no problem, no issues there. And while you can't see any of the LED action of the G2L, um, it is visible from the other side because there's tempered glass on both sides of this chassis in case I forgot to mention that earlier. So that's really cool. I'm glad that uh, feature doesn't go completely unnoticed. Also, um, not much to say about motherboard and CPU cooler installation. The removable radiator bracket here on the N3 Evolve ATX works exactly as I thought it would. It's super simple and convenient to use it allows you to kind of install the motherboard and the radiator simultaneously um, which was super cool um, the cables here mergird aren't they beautiful i mean i didn't really have a wow moment while building this system until i installed these extensions so i'm uh, really happy that joey from nsource hooked it up again there's links in the description below if you want more info on where to get these beautiful cables um geez what else to say here uh the noctua fans are dead silent i mean i haven't heard a damn peep out of them it'll be interesting to do some load testing with this thing in part two because they're not like the super premium noctua fans like the the ones that they're known for um they're a bit more budget oriented they're at a reduced cost so i'm curious to see if they perform just as adequately as those premium fans but uh yeah it'll be cool to see and let's see what else what else what else what else oh oh yeah obviously because there's tempered glass on both sides i had to spend a little bit more time with cable management i'm really happy with how it turned out and honestly it wasn't that much of a burden because tidying up cables in the evolve atx is super easy especially with the power supply shroud there's just tons of room to tuck stuff under not to mention all the tie down points the velcro straps things like that there's plenty of space and, and, and whatnot so Overall, everything looks super good. I'm super happy with it and stuff. Uh, now I have to figure out what, where this is gonna go or should I disassemble it? I hate disassembling rigs when they look this beautiful. It's just such a shame. But yeah, on that note, build success. And uh, let's go ahead and close out this here video. All right, guys, that is gonna wrap it up for part one of October's PC of the month. Be sure you stay tuned for part two coming very soon where we do a full system analysis of this rig, everything from acoustics to thermals to, of course, gaming benchmarks. Also, feel free to let me know what you think of this rig. Do you like it? Do you think it's fugly as hell? Leave me some feedback of some sort in the comments below. You can also toss me a like on this video if you enjoyed it. As always, thank you guys for watching. Subscribe for more, blah, blah. Subscribe for more tech stuff coming at you really soon, and I will see you all in the next video.